everybody, it's Marie, welcome back and uh, thanks for dropping by. Um, this is a video that's been a long time coming, for which I apologise, um, various things got in the way, um, but it's my Q&A video which I promised quite some time ago and so yes, thank you so much for those people who submitted questions, you probably forgot now that you have done that, so you might be surprised if your name pops up. But um, just before we get started, I'll just tell you what I'm wearing. Uh, I know it's not sewn, it's knit, but I happen to be wearing it this morning. This is the um, Legendaire Pullover from um, Tasha Moss, who is by Gun By Golly on Instagram and Ravelry. And um, if you watched my knitting video that I did a couple of weeks ago, uh, I told you I was test knitting it well. I've done test knitting it as you can see and by the time you watch this video um, it'll be out, the pattern will be published so um, if you are a knitter or you know someone who is and you want to ask them to knit it up for you then give it a go. Um, I'll put details of the fabric and links to Tasha's um, Instagram down below um, and yeah I it's a bat wing sleeved um stripey with um it's stocking stitch but then you do you do one kind of wrong way round row if you like to get the uh, pearl bumps there on the outside and i just like these colors so that's that i keep glancing down here now because i've got the questions in front of me so um let's just get on with them so the first question is from Diane Cruz. Thank you, Diane, for the question. And she wanted to know how long I've been sewing for, how I started and what machine that I had. Um, so I can't remember the name of the machine. It was possibly a singer, um, but it was a secondhand machine. And I had been... My dad's sister my auntie mary was always making things for my cousins and one day she I, I was admiring a skirt that my cousin had and she said she would make me one and she did um it was a gypsy skirt i don't know if you remember in the early 80s that that's what maybe in the late 70s people wore now we just call it a skirt with a flounce but they were called gypsy skirts in those days and she made me one of those and I was fascinated by how how it was put together. Um, and so I just thought, I wonder if I could do that. And I was just curious um, to see if I could. And so I think it was my 18th birthday. Um, my mum and dad bought me this second hand sewing machine. Now, I don't know where they got it from, but it worked fine. And that's how I started. I started to make... I started with cushion covers. I made some curtains. Um... And then I made some boxy tops. Most of the time to start with, I wasn't using patterns. It was just things that were square. Um, I didn't have any lessons apart from a couple of home economics, we called it, in school. Um, but to be honest, it was six weeks of teacher holding your hand. And I don't felt I feel like I really learned much from that. But that's kind of what got me sewing. And then I've sewed on and off and started to use some simple patterns and carried on from there. Most of what I, I think just about all of what I've learned has been by, in more recent years, watching YouTube videos. Um, of course, I didn't have YouTube when I was a teenager, so maybe I'm just a slow developer. Question two is from Lost My Thread, that's Teresa. Hi, Teresa, thank you for the question. And she wants to know why I first started to learn to sew, which I, just mentioned really it was curiosity more than anything else but then she said is it the same reason now that I sew or has that changed and actually absolutely it has I think having the confidence in my early years to make simple things um, made was a real help then as I grew older and began to understand more about why shop bought clothes weren't fitting me as well as I wanted them to um, because I'm five foot tall so I'm shorter than average and um, my proportions I'm bustier than average and do you know as you get older your 
body shape changes anyway. So, you know, I don't fit into shop bought things as easily. I don't fit into most patterns easily, but that's the advantage. You can adjust them. And that is one of the reasons why I like to sew now is because I can um, create garments that fit me so much better. And then it makes me feel better when I'm wearing things that I like rather than things that I've bought because they're the nearest thing that would do. Um, and also it's a bit of creativity as well now. Um, when I was younger, I used to have dance classes and music classes and that was my creative out outlet. I think now um, my creativity is through garment making. Um, so I like to see things and maybe try and adapt them or think, how could I do that? Or see a fabric and think, yeah, I want to make something with that. So yeah, it's creative as well as practical now. Let's do through some Donna, I'm gonna say Donna Cheslick. If I've got that wrong, Donna, I'm so sorry. Um, it's a name that I see written down from you, but I've not heard said out loud. But Donna wants to know, how do I choose what to make? And then where do I source the fabrics and the patterns? So um, I've been thinking about this recently because I've not made an awful lot recently. And I was trying to work out what that was. Um, one of the things is that I, this year anyway, I've been feeling like, um, I don't want to make things for the sake of it. So I'll choose to make something if I feel like there's a gap in my wardrobe or if something really, really grabs me, like if I see something and I just think I have to have it. So for example, last year, the Hope dress by Style Arc, I saw the pattern and immediately I needed to have it. So I got the pattern and I made up a dress with some fabric from Stash. And then it can work the other way as well, in that I was in my local fabric shop for something entirely different, possibly even just thread. And then, yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, um, and then I was walking out and I happened to catch sight of this lovely fabric. Um, and I saw the fabric and thought, oh, I want the fabric and it needs to be a hope dress. So that was my accidental hope dress. But I kind of was inspired. I just kind of see either a pattern or fabric and one inspires the other. There's not always one definite way of doing it. And in fact, that happened to me just on uh, last week. And so on Saturday, I ended up going to Longsight Market because Paul's fabric store there, he put some things on Instagram and I just saw a fabric and I just immediately wanted to have it. In fact, it's just out there, just bear with me a second. Um, I just washed it so it's slightly, slightly damp. Um, it's not sopping wet, but I can feel like, and so it's not been ironed either. So this is what there was on Instagram. I mean, it's jade green floral. How could it not be me? So I immediately wanted to make something in it and I knew I wanted a nice kind of dress, a spring kind of dress. And I was just scrolling through Instagram and was reminded because I saw a post of the McCall's um, 7969 that was free from Minerva during um, So Frugal Month. So this is going to be hopefully a McCall's 7969 once I've sewn it, um, ironed it, and um, I need to do a 12 for the bodice because it's got a V at the front, so I need to check where that falls. And I've heard that it's quite. Um, it fits quite large, so I want to be sure I've got the right size, but it's printed out, so I'm going to be twirling that. So that was my inspiration for that. It was kind of like two things happened at once. So, yeah, there's no rhyme nor reason. It's whatever I see that I like. So Paula has asked, um, Paula Matson, thank you, Paula, how big is my stash and is it manageable or scary? That's a really interesting one because... When my stash was in the big, ugly, but very useful cupboard um, that was usually behind me when I was recording, um, I felt like there was an awful lot there and I didn't have a handle on what it was. And I felt like every time I opened the door, it felt quite, um, quite overwhelming. Um, but since the room has been decorated, um, my stash is different now. It's, let me just see if I can move you gently. So 
my stash is now in this Kallax unit. And while I was putting it in there, um, I also um, started to use the Trello app. And that Michelle Sows again um, was really, she did a video on how she used it and I thought I would give it a try. So that's enabled me to sort out what I have. Um, mainly it was, for me, it's sorting out what I've got enough length of to make a garment. So um, if it's a, a metre or more, then it's in there. Um, I end up with sometimes with lots of half metres or 0.8 of a metre. Um, and I know that a lot of people would use that to make a camisole or something like that. I, I like to have sleeves. So I one thing I am wary of in my stash is that I've got several, quite a lot of, now that I've measured up using and, and put it in Trello, and now know I've got quite a lot of 0.8 of, of something, which isn't quite enough. So I'm trying to make an effort now to um, just buy, exact, buy what I need fabric wise or to try and find something that will mix with something else so that I can put the two fabrics together. Again, one of the issues, I'll be honest with this, I'm not a patchwork fan. Um, so I know people do make, um, use a lot of scraps and things to make patchwork type garments. I That's not me. So I don't want to do that. So I don't quite know what to do there. Um, that's pondering, but at least now I have a handle on what's there. So I guess that means it's not as overwhelming now. Um, and also, it's easier for me to see what I have got if I'm thinking of making something. Um, Andra from Andra Makes, thank you Andra, has asked what has surprised me most about having a YouTube channel? Um, something I, perhaps I didn't expect. Um, first of all, I'm surprised that anybody watches. Um, and thank you if you do. I, I basically started the channel because um, I don't have any many friends, people I know that do a lot of sewing, and um, I just felt like I wanted to chat. And also, I've gotten I've had so much inspiration from other people's videos um, and ideas that they've had that I've thought, oh yeah, I like that. Um, that I thought I would try and you know make a contribution. So, I have to say, the sewing community is fantastic, and there are people that I chat to through YouTube comments or on Instagram. Sounds silly, but I feel like they're my friends already, even though we've never met. And then the ones that I have met have been delightful. It's been absolutely wonderful. So, um, yeah, the community is fantastic. Lovely people. And thank you for watching, because I really didn't think anybody would. Question six is from um, 67 Bennington. I'm sorry I don't know your name any more than that. Um but 67 Bennington has asked a non-sewing question, which is great, absolutely fantastic, which is, what are some places that I'd like to travel to, maybe local or internationally? And actually, that's a really interesting one because in the before times, um, I used to travel quite a lot or as much as I could um, and been very fortunate to be able to do that and have been to some wonderful places. Um, so there are... My idea was that I, once I'd retired, I'd be able to do more travelling. Well, you know, world circumstances are not, you know, people are travelling. I'm travelling a little bit, but there are certain, I think, limitations that we all need to be aware of or precautions we need to take. So that's just limiting my adventurousness. Is that a word? Uh, at the moment, but who knows what will happen in the future two things that I desperately want to see or places that I want to go for sure. Uh, one is Japan that's been on my list for a very, very long time. And I would love to travel to Japan, particularly in cherry blossom time. I mean, any time would be great, but if I can choose, um, I would like to go in cherry blossom time. And the other thing I'd like to do definitely is I'd like to see the northern lights so 
there are various options for doing that which I'm looking into and perhaps for my significant birthday in a couple of years time that might be on the agenda. Um, other than that I love going places that I've never been before, there are so many places in Europe to start with that are you know not that difficult to travel to in, in many senses. Um, I lived in Germany for a while and there are still plenty of places in Germany that I haven't visited and I would say that one of my favourite cities in the world is Berlin and that's a city I'm always happy to go back to so once once I start feeling confident travelling again hopefully I'll be able to continue with that so yeah and then Tima by FK thanks for the question has asked what would be an ultimate palette cleanser project um, and I think the first obvious answer is a t-shirt. So I have a couple of t-shirt patterns that I know um, sew up easily, fit well how I want them to. So things like a Mandy Boat tee, um, Plantain by uh, Deer and Doe, uh, both free patterns. Um, both of those are kind of go-to t-shirts for me. So if I want something that will sew up quite easily and that I know is going to work then that would be an option. Uh, woven wise um, I like to choose things that I know obviously if it's a palette cleanser it's got to be easy. It does have to be easy but I have to know that when it's finished it'll fit. Um, so something like uh, Love Notion's Rhapsody top is one that I particularly like. Um, you know it has a yoke a burrito yoke uh, part of the shoulders. Um, it has a little bit of bias binding for a tie, which you can leave off. It, I like it on. It's a little bit fiddly, but it's not complicated. Um, and I, I just know that I've got that pattern now in a format that fits me nicely. So if I'm looking for a nice woven top, that's one. So they would be my palette cleansers. And Tim has also asked... Um, another question which um, Michelle Sows again has kind of asked a similar kind of question, which was, is there something that I've dreamt of sewing but would be too intimidated to try so far? Um, and Tim has phrased it as what would open up a world of opportunity if I could overcome and or master a particular skill. So I think for me that is trousers. I'm not a massive jeans wearer so I wouldn't quite go that far. Um, although who knows, never say never. But I don't wear that many jeans, They're certainly not classic uh, jeans with rivets and top stitching and things like that. Um, so I think I've been trying for so long to get trousers to fit properly and every time I think I've got it and then it turns out to be not quite right so I think I said in a recent video creating trying to get a pattern that you know a, that fits me for trousers would be brilliant um, so I'm hoping to do that over the summer because I've had such struggles with it I find it quite intimidating even though you know there's only like four five pattern pieces and not there's not that much you know the pattern I'm looking at has got two front legs two back legs and a facing it's not even a waistband and so it's very there's very little going on there I'm, I'm even starting without pockets to simplify it and I still can't get it right so um yeah I think trouser fitting and who knows beyond that Something that I've um, thought about but kind of pushed aside also is making a bra. Um, I just, I'd love to get one, I'd love to make it one to be able to fit me nicely. But then I, I have found a place now where I can buy them that fit me nicely. And there are just so many bits and pieces. I just, I feel like, no, at the minute, definitely not. And that looks quite intimidating too but yeah let's stick with trousers so that's all the questions thank you so much to everybody who 
who sent one to me and I'm so sorry for the delay um, I hope I answered the questions that you wanted and to everyone else thank you so much for stopping by today I hope you're doing well I hope your sewing is going great and I'll see you again soon take care